had a little bit of free time this weekend, so I uh, took a bomber out, which I haven't done in a while. And I got a few kills with it, so I decided I'd go ahead and throw a video together, because I also haven't uploaded in a while. And um, with the most recent EVE expansion, Ascension, we have a lot of new players in game, so I'm going to go ahead and try and get kind of detailed with what I do so all the kills in this video aren't uh, spectacular by any means. I still think a lot of new players can learn a lot from it. So in this uh, first part of the clip, I'm just entering a wormhole, and typically I'll make sure that I bookmark the wormhole, and it's important to make sure you have a consistent bookmark scheme. Here I use the class and the signature of the hole. Also I approach the hole and I reload my probes. I want to make sure they're completely reloaded before I go into the wormhole. If you jump, if you start your jump before your probes have finished reloading, they won't finish reloading uh, during the jump. So you want to make sure that they've completely reloaded before you go in. And of course once you've jumped in, one of the first things you do is bookmark the, um, the other side of the hole so that you can easily get back out. And um, also I forgot to mention, but you actually want to make sure you bookmark the wormhole itself, like from the overview or in space. If you bookmark the signature, that'll uh, get you into trouble, as you won't land exactly on the wormhole when you warp to it. Um, also one of the first things I do is I hit D scan, and here I see that I'm actually at one of the outer planets in the system, and I can't see the majority of the planets in system. So I'll want to warp to the center of the system, um, and in the center of the system you can usually see the vast majority, like 80 or 90 percent, or in many cases the entire system. Um, so what I do is I warp to the Planet One Customs Office at range, and this is almost always a safe place to warp. If you warp to the planet itself, then you might actually run into the Customs Office and be decloaked. And I, uh, in the past, haven't had the star. I have the star on. Um, this particular overview, I just got a new computer, but I used to not, so I've just gotten in the habit of warping to the customs office instead. Once I get into the middle of the system, I see a procure and an MTU on scan, a mobile tractor unit, and I want to see where they are immediately. So what I've done, and you might have to rewind the video here, is I've started quickly uh, tightening up my D scan until I figure out exactly what distance they're at. And once I get within one or two tenths of an AU, I'll be able to um, figure out what signature they're at. And unfortunately I was fiddling with shadow play here, so I uh, had to cut out the part where I actually look at the anomalies, but you can see that I've figured out which anomaly they're at, and I know that they're going to be there before I even land because I've made sure to locate them on D-scan, um, you know, kind of precisely. So I make a bookmark as well when I'm landing. Again, you might have to rewind a little bit to see that, but that'll act as a perch. And I immediately get information on the pilot and typically I'd look up uh, Z Killboard. I think I do this when I'm not recording, but I may have just not done it at all. Um, but you should definitely do that. If I didn't do it, that's a mistake, because a lot of times uh, corpse will bait people out, and a Killboard can tell you whether or not they're going to bait you. And then since this is a very large system, I warp to a far planet, because I need to online one of my... Uh, ballistic control systems. I would actually recommend that you don't do this, and instead you just create a fit that actually fits, um, so you don't have to mess around with online and offlining modules. And also here you see I try to warp before I online my module, and this means that I have to uh, actually wait for my capacitor to recharge. So again, just make sure your ship fits correctly. Um, the reason that my fit is like this is because they've recently updated the modules, and I haven't updated my fits. Uh, so that's unfortunate, and I have to sit here and wait for a while, but I'll go ahead and cut that out. And uh, once I've managed to online my module, I work back to the perch that I made when I was landing. And what that'll allow me to do is investigate the um, situation a little bit more and figure out exactly where I want to work to. In a previous video, I showed how to kind of move your camera around um, in a particular way to figure out how to get, you know, the the most ideal warp in, and that's what I was going to do here. Um, and we'll see what happens here in a minute. I actually, um, I don't end up doing that. Uh, and um, everything's happening kind of quickly here. It is important that you try to move quickly, but um, it's not that important to move quickly. So if you're new, go ahead and take your time. And uh, here, I, you know, I see the Procure hanging out, and uh, I'm going to try and figure out what to do, but then a Miasmos decloaks, and 
I actually want to make sure that I get on top of this pretty quickly because um, the miasmas might cloak again after he picks up whatever it is he's picking up. Or he may just, you know, want to be warping out or something. So I immediately find something near him, which he was near the, uh, the Rex, and I warp to them. Now the Procure is actually a um, pretty dangerous ship. It should kill a bomber, or at least chase a bomber off all the time. So I want to make sure that I'm fairly far away from it. Once I land and I see that I'm pretty much at the edge of scram range, I go ahead and decloak, lock the Miasmos, and kill it instantly, and then I lock the Procure. And uh, I actually want to try and get the pod here, but it then doesn't work out for me, the pod warps off. So I go back to the Procure, and I want to make sure that I stay kind of towards the edge of a long point range, which is between 20 and 24 kilometers, in case he points me. And again, in a previous video, I uh, actually died to a bait Procure, so... That's something I want to be uh, cautious of here. And this guy's actually going down fairly quickly for a Procure, and they're usually very tanky. Um, so I'm not, not that worried, but I am a little bit worried. You can see I'm kind of moving my camera around here looking for things that might be uh, warpable in the direction I'm moving, but I can't find any. So I figure I'll just keep burning this way to get closer to the edge of point range. And then if he launches drones, you know, maybe I'll turn around and I'll burn out a point range and uh, turn around and fly off or something. And then I also lock up the MTU here so I can start shooting that next. You know, I don't want to have to hang out here uncloaked for any longer than I really need to. Um, it's also important to be watching D-Scan during this time. I'm not really on top of it, but um, for some reason the pod warped back. But, you know, if a pod warps in and then just warps out, you can't catch it. So no big loss there. Or, or maybe, I guess that was maybe the pod that ejected from the Procure. But anyways, no worries. Um, I move on to the mobile tractor. You know, this takes a little while to grind down. And, you know, I'm still, at this point, I'm pretty sure it's not bait. And also, I'm thinking about the uh, the wreck here. That's one thing to be cognizant of if they have a mobile tractor unit is it can potentially pull in the, uh, the wreck. I'm not really worried about the loot that much here. But sometimes uh, the loot can be significant, so... Uh, it's just something to keep in mind. Anyways, I'm sitting here uh, knocking down the mobile tractor unit. And I kind of want to be aligned to something or moving in the direction of something, you know, that I can warp to, even though I'm pretty sure it's not bait at this point. I just want to be cautious. And uh, the structure is the, the biggest part of the mobile tractor unit. Also, I noticed the pod on scan, so I'm uh, tweaking my D scan here to try and figure out exactly where it's at. And I come up with it being at the sun, so you can see here I'm actually I've actually narrowed it down by range and uh, angle, and so I'm thinking, well, should I warp to the sun and get the pod? You know, and I I finally decide that, yeah, I'll go ahead and give it a shot. So uh, you know, I can always come back for the MTU. It's you know, it's whatever. It's just an MTU anyway. Um, so I try to warp to the sun, and believe it or not, I'm stuck on this enormous rock in front of me, even though I'm nowhere near it. But that's Eve. Um, something I guess you get used to early on in your career. So after a while, I figure out, oh wait, you know, I'm I'm stuck. So I actually manually pilot up, and I go ahead and get a couple more shots off on the MTU while I'm doing that, and then I move back to work to the sun. Um, so I can try and get a pod, and you only get the pod if he's completely AFK. You know, if he sees you land or decloak or anything, the pod will insta warp. So if he's just really not paying attention or AFK, then then I get him, and otherwise I don't. But of course it took so long because I was running into an invisible wall. The uh, the pod's already gone. So I go ahead and just decide that I'll fly back and uh, finish off the MTU. And then uh, what actually happens here, again, I had to fiddle with shadow play a lot, and so I don't actually capture all of this. Is that, well, first of all, I work back and I finish off the MTU, and then I also shoot all the wrecks, and that's something that you want to generally get in the habit of doing, just kind of like covering your tracks. Um, and what I should do after this, because, you know, you've seen the whole thing here, you know, I came in the system, oh, and this is the new the new uh, character sheet, I can't figure out what I'm doing with it, but I think I was just trying to look for the kill or something. Um, but anyways, what I was saying is, since I don't have any intel on the system, you know, I just came in, I saw the Procure and I shot it. What I really want to do is I want to scan it down, kind of ASAP. And again, my probe launcher is offline, so I have to deal with that. Um, but I want to scan it down and I want to figure out 
exactly what's going on, where these guys, you know, came from and what their story is. Um, and unfortunately, I don't, I don't really uh, do that very well. I scan kind of lazily. And what actually ends up happening is these guys came in from a separate high sec from me. And they actually bring a hauler in, I think, to try and scoop the loot from this gank. And I could have killed that as well if I had been uh, paying attention and been more on top of uh, gathering intel instead of goofing off, you know, and, and tabbing out and stuff and being slow with scanning down the system. Um, and you can see that here with the, the Terra that I just kind of catch the tail end of. Uh, but that's that's pretty much it for this gank, which is actually a, a pretty straightforward gank as far as ganks go. This clip requires a little bit of setup, but I want to quickly describe what we're seeing on screen here. Um, and then I'll have plenty of time to talk later, but I'm on a high set call in the C2. There is a Cinnaball here. I'm cloaked and they don't know that I'm here. And an Iteran is landing on the high set call and jumping out. This uh, particular high sec system, the, the high sec system that's connected via this hull, is to from Amar, which is one of the larger hubs in the game. And as you can see, one Iteran has just jumped out and another one has jumped in. It's decloaked now and it's going to warp off. This Iteran that has just decloaked is actually going to warp into a C6 hull. And the C6 hull is the highest class, um, well, it gets complicated, but it's basically the highest class wormhole in EVE, which means it's the, you know, it's got the most potential for profit, but also it's one of the most difficult holes to live in. And you can see here that the Cinnabolt warps off as well. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and warp after them. I've already kind of uh, seen what's going on here. Uh, so I know that this Cinnabolt is just kind of uh, escorting these that are on through. The nice thing about a bomber, though, is that it can kill an Iteran usually in one hit. I mean, that's usually what ends up happening. I don't know if I've ever um, attacked an Iteran and not killed it in one hit. So even though the Cinnaball is guarding and the Cinnaball is typically known as a ship that can quickly destroy frigates, I feel like as long as I can take one or two hits, I can uh, insta-pop an Iteran at close range. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sit here on the C6 and wait for the Edoron that's just gone through into the C6 to come back. You know, they've been doing this for a while, so I'm, uh, you know, hopeful that I can catch the Edoron here. And since the Cinnaball is sitting on the C6 hole, I expect that this Edoron will come back before the one that jumped out into high sec comes back. And when you see this kind of thing going on, you kind of have to ask yourself, well, do I think that they're bringing stuff into the hole? Or do I think they're taking stuff out of the hole? Sometimes you can use the other intel that you've gathered to try and figure out, you know, if they're moving into a wormhole, you probably want to shoot them when they're coming in. If they're just hauling out loot, you probably want to shoot them when they're uh, going out. And in this case, in hindsight, um, it's more probable that they're bringing stuff in. You know, when you get these uh, convenient high sec routes, such as this one, which goes straight from a C6 to a C2 to um, a System 2 jumps from a MAR, you probably want to do things like refill your boss and whatnot. Um, so that's probably what they were doing, but I still make the decision to gank the other on coming out of the C6. Uh, what I'm doing right now, you can see on screen, is I'm manually piloting around the wormhole. Now you don't want to go straight through the wormhole to get to the other side of it because you'll um, and once you get within 2,000 kilometers of the wormhole, you'll decloak. Obviously that's not a good idea for me right here. But I do want to be on the other side of it. You know, I warped in from the high set hole to the C6, so I landed on the side closest to the high set hole. But what I want to do, my plan of attack here, is going to be move to the opposite side of the wormhole and wait for the other run to come through. And when he comes through and decloaks, I'm going to start aligning toward the high set wormhole. Then I can shoot the other run and uh, maybe warp off, just warp toward the high set wormhole, which is where I want to be anyway. Because if you'll remember, there's an Iteron out in high sec that I'm expecting to come back. Um, on the other hand, if the Cinnaball points me, what I'll be doing is I'll actually be traveling through the wormhole's hitbox. And that means that I'll actually be able to use the wormhole if I do get pointed by the Cinnaball. And um, this, this goes on for 
sometime. You know, this is a, a camping kind of thing. You know, I'm setting up right now, and I'm I'm honestly just hoping the Iteron comes back. I don't even know if it's going to come back. I just suspect that it will again because the Cinnabol is guarding this side. Um, but I'll go ahead, ahead and uh, fast forward a little bit here so you don't have to see me camping, although it only does take a, a couple minutes. Okay, so here we are. Um, and you see the whole activation that lit up there, and it would also make a noise if you are in-game. At the very same time, the Iteron, or at least the Iteron, came back from high sec. so I think, oh uh, great, you know, the Iteron, I was waiting to come back from high sec. he's here now. Uh, so I have to make a choice, do I jump through and follow the one coming back, or do I shoot the one coming through? But I stick to the plan, and I go ahead and shoot the guy coming through. You know, I align, I shoot the Iteron, it dies in one hit like I expected. And I figure since, uh, you know, I'm missing the Iteron that came back, I might as well go for the pod here. Um, the Cinnabal points me, so again, I'm going to have to jump through the hole. Um, he actually missed the last volley, but, you know, I wasn't going to risk it. There's no point in getting cocky, I guess. I mean, it might have been a nice pod, but, you know, it might have been nothing. So, I'd rather just uh, save my ship and uh, live to fight another day. This is a pod coming, coming back through. I guess he just slow-boated back to the wormhole or something. Um, and I checked the kill, and unfortunately, it's completely empty, so I know I've made the wrong decision here. You know, I should have got the ship that was coming back in. And uh, I go ahead and jump back through the hole. Uh, and I guess I'll talk about positioning on the hole in just a minute, but I'm not really worried about this Cinnabull over here. I'm going to be polarized, and I know that, but I pretty much can just uh, warp off and cloak here. So I'm going to warp to the high set hole at 10. And uh, this is actually kind of a risky thing to do, but it, I mean... I've been playing a long time, so I just figure it won't be a big deal. The Cinnabal could follow me, and if he happens to also warp at 10, he'll decloak me. But if I see that happening, I'll just burn to the hole and jump through. It's not something that I would recommend, uh, necessarily, unless you're kind of comfortable with the game already. Um, and then I, I open up my uh, combat log here, you can kind of see what was going on, and that's uh, something you should also get into the habit of doing, just to kind of like get a feel for what's happening in combat. And uh, I'm hitting D-scan, I'm kind of, I guess, thinking about what I want to do next. And what I decide to do is actually just kind of sit on this hole for a little bit and see what happens. And what I, the, the way I tend to operate is I'll actually sit very close to the hole. You can jump to the hole if you're decloaked and within 5 kilometers of the hole. Um, but you don't get decloaked by the hole until you're within 2 kilometers of the hole. So you can sit between 2 and 5 kilometers and be cloaked, and I find that this is actually a pretty safe place to sit most of the time. So you can see I'm doing that here, I'm at three and a half kilometers, uh, just waiting, you know. If I accidentally do get the cloaked, which actually almost never happens, then um, I can just jump through and I'll be fine. So the Cinnabal actually comes back, and that's a good sign, and there is a hole activation, so that's another good sign. Um, and an Iteron actually comes through. And so I lucked out. I don't know why they kept doing this after I just killed their Iteron. I mean, this was maybe five or ten minutes later, but that's not that long, you know. So I end up popping the Iteron, and again, the Cinnabal gets on me. I uh, actually misses... Uh, like, he doesn't apply as much damage as he did last time, so that's that's good. I might have been able to stay, but again, I kind of chicken out, and I jump out in the high sec. And this time, you can see this is a uh, 75 million is kill in-game. On Z-Kill board, it's actually uh, more like 180. This last clip is actually, um, it doesn't even result in any kills, but it's, uh, just kind of shows what you can do in, uh, some situations, you know, you can mess with people even if, uh, even if you're outgunned and outmatched, but the setup here is that, uh, I jumped into a wormhole, and randomly there was an interceptor and a couple of vexers on the hole. The interceptor was orbiting the hole very close, maybe like, uh, 500 meters off. And unfortunately, I don't have any of uh, the video of this, but I decide since I'm close to Amar again, I'll just go back and I'll get a Thrasher. And if you're not familiar with uh, Thrashers, they have a lot of alpha damage, which means they do a lot of damage in one shot. So my hope is that I can jump in, uh, shoot the Interceptor, which is a, a frigate that's usually lightly tanked, uh, kill it, and then jump back out before... Uh, anybody can do anything to me, and since the hole is on high sec, I just jump back out into the safety of high sec. Uh, Thrasher is a nice ship because it's cheap, and anybody can train into it. You can train into it with an alpha clone in less than one day. Uh, the Thrasher I'm using in this video is actually uh, 
attack two thrasher. Uh, but you can see here I jumped in and and the uh, interceptor is orbiting the hole. I kind of want to wait to um, make sure that I'm kind of going in the same direction as him to minimize transversal. Uh, but unfortunately I kind of make a lot of piloting errors in this uh, particular engagement. I don't overload my tracking computer and uh, I turn on my afterburner which means I'm kind of messing up the tracking for myself and as you can see in this this clip I actually get pretty close to uh, killing them. And then for the rest of this engagement it happens over a kind of a long period of time so I'm just going to kind of rapidly jump through the different points of interest and talk about what's going on in uh, each of them. So I go ahead and repair my ship and I'm uh, waiting out my polarity timer here. You see it's that orange icon in the middle of the wormhole. Um, and my hope is that there's, you know, the interceptor's still there. Obviously that'd be a terrible idea with him being in such low structure, but you never know. And maybe they've, you know, replaced it with a separate interceptor and I can get another shot at it. Uh, the polarity timer goes out here, but I'm waiting a little bit because I know that uh, previously when I jumped through, I got into a little bit of a fight, so the polarity timer on the other side will be offset by a little bit. So I want to make sure that I wait a little bit of time so that uh, if I need to burn back to the hole and jump through, I'll be able to wait out my polarity timer on the other side successfully. And uh, you can see here they've uh, brought in a couple more people. There's no longer an interceptor, there's a sweep pool, and they have a lachesis as well. And uh, I can't really do anything with this, you know. My uh, cute little thrasher tactic is going to do nothing here. So again, I have to wait out my polarity timer um, on this side, but it's almost done and it'll be done before my uh, cloak drops. The cloak timer is the blue timer in the uh, upper left hand corner. So I'm just waiting. And uh, when my polarity timer is up, I'm going to burn back to the hole and jump through. And uh, I'll also take a shot at those people, but really it's I mean, it's for nothing, and I, I don't even think that my shot actually gets off here. But I don't really want to mess around with this too much. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I guess I... Well, I don't know. Did I shoot? I guess I didn't shoot him. No, I did shoot him, but anyways, it doesn't matter. I'm out E5000. Um, but, you know, then I'll switch back into my bomber and kind of scout out the area, see what they do from there. I was actually planning on uh, calling in some reinforcements here. But uh, we'll see how that goes in just a moment. So here I am uh, calling the boys for backup and looking at my demos thinking, oh, you know, we're going to come in and, and get a good fight going. But uh, a Megathron actually appears. And uh, I guess if you're not familiar with wormholes, what this usually means is that they're rolling the holes. Um, I haven't rolled holes with Megathrons before, but they're a very common roll holing ship. They might be able to fit more plates than the other battleships, even though honestly the plates don't add like a significant amount of mass to the to the rolling ship but uh, you know I realize what's going on so I go ahead and work back to station where I have uh, stored my bomber I've made sure to store it in system in case I needed it in some kind of an emergency um, but I go ahead and get into the bomber and I get into the whole ASAP I warp off and deploy probes and I wait for the hole to collapse I want to make sure that when this hole collapses I'm a uh, able to scan down the new static that will pop up after this hole has collapsed ASAP and uh, if you're good at scanning which most people in EVE are you know they're actually fairly slow um, you can actually manage to scan down the hole before their scouts do and being able to scan down the hole and, and uh, map it out before they get there is uh, you know it's a huge asset and Actually, what you can do much of the time is you can scan it down, map it out, and then come back in. And, uh, you know, you can do it quick, quick enough that they don't even, like, realize that you found it yet. Or maybe they think that you have found it and you've jumped out. You know, they just don't have any of that intel in the situation. So, uh, that's what I do here. And I've actually gotten, I mean, you don't see these uh, rolling situations every day, but I've actually gotten a number of kills being able to uh, scan down holes before uh, my enemies scan. Uh, that's not the case here. Usually that's whenever I have a dictator nearby, but um, it, it's something that you should definitely try to do if you can. So uh, here we see the wormhole collapsing. This is after they've successfully managed to, uh, to kill it. And uh, I already have my probes out. And what I didn't mention this earlier, but what I did is I ignored all the signatures in the system. And uh, the reason I do that is because it's just easier to keep track of um, the new one when it comes up. You know, when the new signature 
pops up, it'll show up on my scanner, and I won't have to say, oh, is that the new signature or not? It's the only one that's going to be on my on my scanner. Um, and you can see me like I'm showing the noms and then taking them off. You have to manually refresh the um, the uh, probe window a lot of the times. So it's not the case when a new hole spawns, but you know I'm just kind of getting antsy because I know that this is like a time sensitive situation, like I was explaining. Um, and these holes usually show up pretty quickly. Uh, a lot of people will say, oh, it might take several minutes, but usually it's it's like 30 seconds or something like you can see here. It, it just doesn't take that long. And uh, like I said, I'll make another video where I talk about uh, how I scan exactly and the, the different um, kind of things that I do to optimize hunting. But I can talk about it a little bit here. Uh, one thing I do is I always reduce the size of my probes by two. So if you watch, you know, you can see I just did it there and I'm going to scan again and then if I don't get a hit, on the scan, I'll uh, reduce the size by two again. You should be able to scan down a wormhole in three scans at most, unless you get unlucky. Um, so in this case, you know, I have to I have to scan again. And uh, if you're not familiar with the basics of scanning, like what to do whenever you have two dots, um, you can look up another video. I'll link one in the description as well, though. Uh, also, I align toward the signature ahead of time, just so that I can uh, get into warp a little bit faster. So you can see as soon as the um, scan is finished, I immediately entered warp. And then I want to jump out, um, you know, make my bookmarks and jump back in ASAP because I want to be cloaked before their scanner. You can see they, I've pulled probes, but they have scans out, or scanner probes out also, so they're looking for this exit as well. I want to be out and back in before they ever get on grid. And I don't know um, if for sure I managed to be successful in doing that here, but as we'll see in a second, I think I, I'm pretty confident that I am. Uh, so I get the new exit here, and unfortunately this is out in derelict, which is like nobody's ever near derelict, so uh, me calling in, you know, my boys to help out with these guys is not likely to happen. Uh, you know, most people don't want to fly 20 jumps. Uh, they actually had an exit kind of close to here, um, but what we'll see in a minute is that these guys uh, immediately mass this hole, and they don't actually collapse it this time, so... There is a, a mast hole, and you have to go through some elaborate sort of chain in order to get to it. Um, I've I've cut out some time here, but you can see that the polarity timer has already ticked away. This guy is actually a couple minutes late here, um, but this is the guy that scans down their hole. So here I am on the hole, and um, we see that a couple of megas are, are warping in. They're starting to mast the hole again, um, and these like. These megas, like, I realize they're not fighting ships, but people, a lot of times, they just don't do anything with them. You know, there's no drones on them or anything, so I've managed to kill battleships with the solo bomber that just don't have any kind of weaponry or stabs or anything equipped at all. Uh, so I figure, you know, I'll go ahead and take a shot at these. I was I was thinking maybe I wouldn't, you know, maybe I wouldn't reveal myself, but I went ahead and did it here. In hindsight, I probably shouldn't have. Um, you know, I just said that I've killed battleships doing this, but it's not that common. Honestly, they could probably make it back to the hole before I manage to kill them. Uh, usually when I kill them, they're, they're not on a high sec hole. Because uh, even though you're in a bomber, they do take a while to grind through. Especially if they're all tanked out with plates and everything to roll holes. Um, but again, you see me here, I keep at range 3500, so I can uh, sit in that kind of like little safe pocket that I was talking about earlier in this video. Um, and I've seen these Megas do, and you, you know, you can watch the video and see that some of them just kind of warp in and out, and other ones cloak, or something like that. I'm, I don't really know what was going on here, but I assume that, um, you know, they might end up cloaking, and then I might have to go for the decloak. Um, so they, you know, they come back in here, you can see the hole reduces, uh, but I get ready for the, uh, the decloak, which in a bomber is, you know, my bomber is not that fast, so it's not going to be like a... And I mean, I'm, we're talking about a cloaking battleship, so it's, you know, it's a slow motion Austin Powers type thing going on right now. And uh, this guy decloaks, I think I let him warp off, because I think there were two here. And uh, in hindsight, you know, I could have caught this guy. Um, since he didn't cloak, he was he was doing the warp thing. And uh, maybe I should have just gone for that. But, you know, I figure if he was off grid, then I only have one battleship to contend with. Also, I've shortened up my uh, D-scan here. Uh, the the Astro House is like 0.5 AU away, so if I want to see incoming ships, the D-Scan needs to be this tight. 
So I tried to lock this guy, and he's not locking. And even though I knew that he was going to cloak, I didn't like it. Didn't register for some reason that he was actually going to cloak. Uh, so I tried to manually pilot out to him, and I load rage here because I'm going to be shooting at a battleship. Uh, but I start kind of getting far away from the hole, and these guys have brought out interceptors before. There was some stuff that I didn't show where they, you know, like we're we're trying to to get at me one way or another, or, or I don't know, maybe maybe it was just the first part with the Thrasher, but anyways, I knew that they had the capacity to bring out small ships to try and kill a bomber, so I chicken out here, and I decide, you know what, I'm just going to go back to the hole and, and sit within the, the uh, like, safety of the hole here, and then nothing really happens after this, I don't really make anything of this, um, so it's kind of like just playing my hand for no reason, it was a pretty big mistake, and in hindsight, like I said, I probably should have, uh, at least maybe tackled the battleship that was trying to warp off or maybe just not done this and tried to see what they were going to do next um, but you can see the cavalry is coming now and uh, I guess I choose to warp off here I mean it could have jumped out as well um, but honestly I mean for the most part I could have jumped out even if they did manage to tackle me so anyways actually um, after this honestly I went and I got a burger just kind of AFK'd for a while and uh, after I came back, I noticed that they were actually uh, mining. They had set up a skiff and a procure, and this is like this is pretty obvious bait, honestly. I mean, uh, I don't even think that really they were trying to pull one over me or something. I mean, maybe they just wanted to mine, and they figured this is a way they could do it safely with there just being one bomber in system. Um, both of the statics were mass, so I couldn't call anybody in, uh, really. I mean, you know, you could fit together like a, a small fleet, uh, or not a small fleet, but a fleet of small ships and maybe take this out, and it's a few hundred million kills, so if you're in a group that really wants to do that kind of thing, then, um, you know, feel free to do something like that. I mean, I just felt like my corp, you know, they were all busy with other stuff, so I figured, well, what could I do here, you know? I mean, I had to do something, because... You do not get to win, shitbird! We do! So anyway, I see they uh, have a jet can out here with ore in it, most likely, you know, with the miasmos and everything, so I figure I'll try to snipe that, you know? Figure if I can do that, that'll, uh, you know, justify all my mistakes and it'll probably be the, uh, you know, I think that, that can there is the cornerstone that will cause their, uh, you know, corp to crumble if I manage to take it out. Uh, but actually I, I want to go ahead and try to hit the Miasmos here. Um, I, you know, Miasmos, is, they actually can be tanky, but, uh, sometimes they're not, so I figure I'll give it a shot. Um, and I warp in... You know, like, pretty close, but just kind of out of scram range, so this is some real, you know, like, chicken-style stuff. Like, I'm not, you know, I don't want to get too close. I mean, they'll, honestly, they'll just kill me, though. I mean, they're probably set up with points and everything, so... I do cloak, and I start shooting at the, uh, Miasmos, but, of course, they're probably expecting it. So he bugs out pretty quick. And, uh, instead of warping off, like I said, you know, I gotta hit that can. That's the, the main objective here. This is how you win the game. So I lock the can and I shoot it. And, uh, you know, if you leave before your torpedoes hit, they don't do damage. So I'm sticking around trying to make sure that they hit. And uh, the drones get on me and they take my shields out and I warp off. But luckily my torpedoes hit, you know, just as the, the drones are about to get me into armor and they probably nuke me pretty quick from there. So uh, lucky me, I got the can and, and basically I, I won the game at this point. And I pretty much just... Uh, head out, you know, you see me warping around here, um, just kind of feeling them out, but mostly I've, you know, I spent a while in here, I've, uh, these clips are all, all just portions of, uh, the, the overall operation, which took probably a couple hours, most of that me just being AFK doing other stuff, um, but like I said, you know, both of the holes are crit, so I can't get that many ships in, and most of my corp is busy anyway, the exit is actually... Uh, out in the middle of nowhere, so I can't reship into something else, and so I pretty much at this point just uh, just head out and call it a day. Um, typically, I don't I don't like to leave things kind of up in the air like this. I like to actually you know get a kill or even just die or you know have have something interesting happen. But uh, like I said, this the set of circumstances here were just not really favorable, and I was feeling kind of lazy, so. Uh, that's pretty much it, and that's pretty much it for uh, these sets of clips. And this this video ended up taking way longer than I thought it would, so in the future I'll probably just uh, keep it to one or two little events, and uh, instead of dragging things out, and then maybe I can also focus and 
uh, explain the details a little bit more. I know that as this clip went on, I got a little bit sidetracked. And uh, the next video I make, I've mentioned it a couple times now, but it will probably be a detailed sort of description of the way that I actually do hunting. Uh, everybody does it differently, but, you know, what I do works for me. So uh, you can look forward to that.